So here's the video about the web interface on the Huawei HG633 router as sent out by TalkTalk Talk Business early May 2018. So by default the router is on, uh, has DHCP switched on, so your computer will get an IP address and the router is on 192.168.1.1 The username and password are on the sticker on the back of the router and the default username is just admin and then the password is unique to each router so you'll definitely need access to the sticker on the back or possibly I don't know whether talk to business themselves keep a record of it and could tell you if you give them verification unlikely but if you're really stuck it's worth asking so in my case the password is capital A 9 capital M C B H F H so it tells me that I should modify the default password which I don't want to do I want to keep it the default password because it's not this route is not going to be used in production so I won't say don't remind me again but I'll click cancel and so this is the first screen that you get which has the check my internet connection status which for me it's unplugged I'm just testing this router there's no way I can plug it into a DSL line uh, customize wireless check network status or change my admin password so I'm gonna click I just want to see whether these two menu elements take you to the same place I'm gonna click on the uh, the big button in the middle which says check my internet connection status and I'm going to go back and then click on internet okay it does take you to two separate pages which is a little bit confusing um, that check my internet status has no settings on it it's literally just the status of it um, you would need to click on internet uh, to be able to make changes so internet internet connection edit yeah okay so if I click on internet click on there's nothing you can change on this first screen it just says whether it's auto mode or current connection type VDSL presumably if you plugged it into a standard broadband line it would also work uh, click on internet connection and I'm going to click on edit next to the VDSL and you get these options you can see on the screen so whether the connection is enabled the service name which is just the name that is on your router you could call it anything you wanted um, interestingly you can unselect or deselect TR69 which is remote management or remote configuration so if you're I wouldn't really say paranoid but if you want more control over your router and to mm, reduce the chance that TalkTalk Talk can administer it remotely you might want to untick that box it looks like um, nothing particularly interesting in here the VLAN IDs if you're using this router in a different country it's nice to see that you can actually edit the username and password box which on for example BT hubs um, you on the non business versions you can't edit the username and password so you can't reuse the router anywhere else which, um, slightly annoying I'd say looks like it only supports and it can enable IPv6 as well as IPv4 on the WAN side if your internet provider you are using it with supported IPv6 that's all you can really do in uh, that section firewall you've got flood protection and allowing or disallowing Samba which is the file sharing presumably for the USB interface that's on the router from the LAN on uh, not and ICMP from the LAN I'm quite a fan of enabling pings from the internet so I would probably go new access control ICMP on the WAN side and save so yeah if you wanted to enable WAN ping that would probably do it the option for a DMZ and application filters which looks like you can block uh, a selection of stuff 
add an application. Okay, it allows you to block port ranges, so it is uh, quite a feature-rich firewall. And if we go to Internet Services, you've got Dynamic DNS, which is nice to see. What is not nice to see is it only supports one provider uh, with a template. So DynDNS and TZO, as far as I remember, TZO and DynDNS are now the same service. Neither of them are free, which is quite frustrating. Uh, possibly you could use the other option to configure it, for example, with no ip.org or no, no hyphen ip.com. Um, in the past, I've seen this type of configuration not work properly with that. So that's one thing to watch out for, is if you do want to use DynDNS, this might be a stumbling block. Got a time server, or it looks like hmm, possibly a time client. Yeah, it does look like a time client. It's not going to get the time because it's not connected to the internet at the moment. Port forwarding. Um, not going to bother with these multi-NAT and port triggers, but let's just see how easy it is to add a port forward for, um, for example, a Team Fortress 2 server. So mapping name TF2 server. There won't be a Team Fortress 2 in the list, so I want to go add a port mapping application. Add a port. Name it again. I mean, I miss the days really where you just had lines for start port, end port, and external start port and end port, and then the IP address to go to. Why do you need to add an application and then bind the application to the port forward? But anyway, so TF2 ports. That'd be 27. 100, 900, no, anyway, just an example. Uh, UDP, internal port, let's see what happens if I leave it zero. It should hopefully just renumber them. No, okay, you have to manually type that in. Save. So hopefully, if I close that, yes, Team Fortress ports. You either get a selection of the devices on LAN. I'm never fan of just selecting the name of a device. I would prefer, oh wow, cool. I would prefer to type in the IP address of a device, but it looks like you cannot do that. You absolutely have, that's very disappointing, you absolutely have to type in the MAC address of a device. Um, well, that's frustrating. So anyway, we'll select a, a device, so we'll select that, say, and that's added that port forward. So not not too difficult. Certainly easier than the Technicolor routers, but not as easy as the old Linksys routers. You can add some static routes. And under the section, for example, networks, how do we change wireless settings? Let's have a look. So wireless. Wireless is enabled. You can change Weirdly, under the encryption section is the SSID, so the name of your network. So I'm going to call that uh, my talk talk broadband. <laughs> What's also ridiculous is it doesn't seem to support spaces in the network name on either of the uh, 2.4 or the 5 gigahertz, which is ridiculous. Having a space in a wireless name is absolutely fine. Um, so again, if you're taking over from an existing router, which does have spaces in its wireless name, and you wanted to use the same name, that's also something to watch out for. You probably can't do that. Security mode. Yep, fairly sensible. I'm going to limit it to WPA2, because everything's pretty much compatible these days. And see what advanced settings we have, transmit power, the channels, other stuff, not a lot interesting in there unless you're really wanting to go customising your Wi-Fi. Save. Password, wow, you can't even have spaces in the Wi-Fi password, which again is something you definitely can do on any other router, or well, most other routers. There's certainly no uh, standards reason for not allowing you to do that, it, it works. So I'm going to have to go 
which is a bit of a shame. An unnecessary restriction there. Uh, click on wireless access and turn off the uh, WPS button on the side of the device if you don't want people walking up to it and pressing the button to get connected. That's quite a good option to have there. Wireless access rules. That uh, would be, I presume, what might have previously been called MAC address filtering. Allow all computers, allow only the specific, disallow. Yeah, and that looks pretty much like MAC address filtering. And then the share tab has got to be, yeah, to do with plugging in a USB uh, storage. And maintain broadband information, wireless information. Doesn't really tell you a lot, it would tell you your line speed if you did want to know how quick your connection was connecting to the telephone exchange or the street cabinet at. That's not a bad idea. And Wi Fi status, account management, you can change the administrator password, but you can't change the administrator account name, it looks like. Uh, it also doesn't look like there's any ability to add a second user. And what else can we do? Reboot the device, factory restore it, firmware upgrade it, or back up and restore some settings. So remote management, this is uh, TR69 or auto configuration service where it will go out to TalkTalk Talk and check to see whether TalkTalk Talk are telling the router to make any changes. Uh, that's, if you're worried about what TalkTalk Talk might do to your router, that's probably worth turning off and possibly in the internet section where it have the TR069 option, it's worth turning that off as well. Statistics tells you what's gone on on each of the interfaces. It's quite, quite unusual for a router to give you per port statistics, and that's also quite nice to have there. System logs which look like they get lost on reboot anyway. Very weird. Diagnostic tools, ping an address or trace route an address. So I mean, that's quite unusual to have those features in a really budget router like this. And it's not, it doesn't look too bad. Whether it's reliable, I don't know. It'd be interesting to know, so leave a comment if you've got one of these and it's reliable or not reliable. Um, just incredibly disappointed that the wireless settings, you can't set a uh, network name with a space and you can't set a password with a space, which is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, if this video has been useful for you, please subscribe. It I don't care whether you have notifications switched on, but being a subscriber puts my subscriber count up, which makes it less likely that YouTube will make it difficult for me to make money on the videos in the future. So thank you very much.